10 good reasons to cancel your TV license. What began with five women claiming in an ITV documentary to have been sexually assaulted by Sir Jimmy Savile has now snowballed. Silence has been shattered. Caroline Moore was just another woman who says she More was women abused come 40 Karen years Moore ago. Told ITV. 40 potential Some victims. from the Broadmoor Hospital. There seems to be no end to the complaints. Newsnight's inquiry into Jimmy Savile last year started a chain of events that was to prove eventually disastrous for the BBC. It was the BBC who made Savile a star, but their handling of the revelations has put the broadcaster's reputation in jeopardy. Obviously, a lot of people knew about it. A lot of people knew what was going on. A lot of people didn't say anything. They just let this guy do what he was doing, and he was allowed to just have carte blanche and just do what the hell he was doing. It's a very, very sick story, and there are a lot of people out there who kept quiet and allowed this to happen to the children. I am appalled that this documentary was pulled when there was clearly enough evidence into a thorough investigation. And the fact is that not only did they pull the documentary at the 11th hour, they then went on to pay tribute to Jimmy Savile by celebrating his life. Yeah. And uh, that to me is absolutely appalling. Two programmes. With two programmes. <laughs> appalling. Um, those people at the BBC they knew that there was enough evidence that had come to public attention since Jimmy Savile died. They knew that they had lots of evidence. They pulled the documentary and they went on to do shows like, like celebrations of Jim will fix yeah. it and everything. And it's absolutely appalling. You know, these people are disgraceful and disgusting. I would never touch the BBC with a barge pole. It's full of paedophiles and uh, criminals. Don't pay your TV licence because you're only paying for paedophile filmmakers to hide in the closet and molest children for God knows how many years. The BBC have been covering up this week, last week, and for 25 years, the appalling behaviour of the paedophile rapist Jimmy Savile. They've been covering it up. They are as complicit as him. They facilitated it. They gave him a screen. They made the events happen, and they've been denying it. They've been denying it last week, this week, we don't know nothing. Yet they pulled a Newsnight programme. Esther Ranson, I knew her baby, but what could I do? She was running Childline, Janet Street Porter, with a gob on her like you've never heard. I didn't have a voice, I didn't know who, what are you talking about? The BBC, the people that covered it up, they're the ones. Dan, what are we standing on? A driveway? Yeah. So, Dan Pentiada, or whatever his name is, that guy off the rogue traders, he's been banged up in prison um, for stealing benefits, and that's basically denying people that really needed the benefits and stealing from the likes of you and I. Uh, he deserves no sympathy whatsoever. It was in fact Dan Pentiado's fame that brought him down. He pleaded guilty to over £24,000 worth of fraud. It was of course his job as part of the roles he had on Watchdog and Rogue Traders to try to protect the public from being ripped off. In the event the court heard he had stolen over £24,000 of money from the public purse. It's money that Bournemouth Borough Council say they're determined to get back. The BBC suspends all phone in quizzes after admitting it has rigged yet more competitions. Even the charity programme's Children in Need, Comic Relief and Sports Relief featured fake winners. The Director General says there's no excuse for deception. It is time, he says, to put our house in order. Trust and honesty with the public is more important than anything else.
There will be a full internal review and anyone who does it again will be sacked. But will this be enough to salvage the BBC's reputation and restore viewers' trust? No, 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 Del Boy. No, you're Nelly. Others decide what to cut. He says the title for this saga is back from the brink. Others may say it's over the edge. You should be ashamed of yourself, mate. You should be ashamed. Shame on you, mate. Shame on you. That's the silly thing to do, man. Be ashamed of yourself. Oh, make me ashamed of myself. Be ashamed of yourself. Why should I be ashamed of myself? To anyone who has any doubts about the morality of not paying a TV license, there's a wealth of research out there about what the BBC does with our money, where it comes from. They have a contract with the public to provide a neutral service. They are there to report in as neutral manner as possible and they are contractually obliged to not accept money from any private corporation in doing their business. Selling our news and the way in which they report the news is strictly forbidden under contract. And the thing is, there has been a relationship with the European Union for some years where the BBC accept millions and millions and millions of pounds uh, for the BBC to report favourably in all of their news reports the activities of the European Union. And for anyone who does any research into the European Union, how it's being organised, what they're trying to do, you will very quickly understand that, that it is a nefarious organisation and it is backed and being managed by some very, very dubious, dubious people. Entwistle decided he could no longer continue as the BBC's chief after a report aired on its flagship programme Newsnight earlier this month was found to have wrongly linked Conservative peer Lord McAlpine to child abuse. In light of the fact that the Director General is also the Editor-in-Chief and ultimately responsible for all content, and in light of the unacceptable journalistic standards of the Newsnight film broadcast on Friday 2nd November, I have decided that the honourable thing to do is to step down from the post of Director General. The BBC has been criticised by the Commons Public Accounts Committee and MPs over its excessive payout to the former BBC Director General George Entwistle, who quit in the wake of the Jimmy Savile scandal, saying it was a cavalier use of public money. Entwistle, who resigned, was paid £450,000 after just 54 days in the job. This payment, however, was criticised by the Commons Committee, who said it was out of line with public opinion. That shows that the people at the top of the BBC just don't get it, because this is all about licence fee payers' money, your money and mine, taxpayers' money, being used in a way which just doesn't make sense in the current climate. Mr Entwistle received £450,000, twice the amount he was entitled to if he'd resigned voluntarily. Former Deputy Director General Mark Byford got £949,000, and former Chief Operating Officer Caroline Thompson received £670,000 when she left earlier this year. Some have suggested that the BBC is actively rewarding failure, and that more resignations, or even sackings, are now in order. It's incredible that they can find that the whole management structure of the BBC is at fault of this whole affair and yet at the end of it no one is going to get the sack and those people who are going to be held responsible are being allowed to shuffle off with big payouts, big pension pots, they'll be moved to other jobs, probably on the same salary. 
The BBC really threw all its eggs in one basket. It decided to go absolutely flat out for promoting the idea of man-made global warming and ignore any evidence or any, any questioning to the contrary. And they've been caught out because the story has changed. And in many ways, what seemed obvious uh, five or six years ago and something that everyone could accept as the consensus, in fact, this is no longer the case. A big step forward in the fight against climate change by the world's richest nations. Now, scientists are warning that the emperor penguin could be extinct by the end of the century because of global warming. At six o'clock, no more doubt, climate change is happening and we are to blame. Leading scientists predict that by the end of the century, some parts of Europe will be too hot to live in. As temperatures soar and sea levels rise, the verdict from the world's leading climate scientist, the human race, guilty of global warming. Unfortunately, on this issue of climate change, uh, the BBC is not interested in having a debate. It is not interested in having balance. It has a party line. It is, a, alas, a propagandist organisation. And they do not want to have anybody who might question the line that they're peddling. This ideological obsession with the religion of climate change is causing serious practical economic problems and social hardship. If you haven't recognised that anti beeb is actually brainwashing you, filling you full of shit, it's a complete shill, uh, obfuscates the truth and steals money off you, then you're a knobhead, so stop paying it. I didn't really realise the extent of this, but we've got BBC, as we all know it in the country, paid for out of BBC uh, licence payers' money, £3 billion plus were. And then on the side, we've got a private company, BBC Worldwide. It has grown off the back of the taxpayers' money. It's now £1.1 billion worth of global media organisation. And... Uh, who is this organisation accountable to? Well, presumably its own, own board members. Um, but something that's quite remarkable is that we, the licence payers that, uh, in UK, are not allowed to watch the information this company's putting forward. It's an ex extraordinary situation. They're boasting about their financial results for 2010-11, headline sales, 1.15 8 billion, which is up 7.8%, and a headline profit of 160 million, up 10.3%. Most people are totally unaware that this is really what the BBC is about. One minute you deal with it and it's claiming it doesn't have any money to do anything and the licence payers support it, and then if you move across a bit, we see this huge global organisation who's in control of it. I'm from TV licensing. TV licensing? Oh, yeah, from TV licensing? Oh, you're TV licensed. The application for the warranty. All right, well, it could be on file, The mafia aspect of the BBC is something that really should be coming out right now because we have a Gestapo. Really, that's how the TV license collectors work, trying to shake you down for £140 a year to get you to pay for programs that you don't want. TV license is a trademark. The BBC. So they've been able to license that trademark out, and other companies have been able to operate under the TV license banner. And also, we see the ads on billboards, which are basically intimidation, threatening ads, also ads that are encouraging people, in some cases in the past, to snitch on their neighbors, yeah. um, and threatening you with a jail sentence, huge fines, um, and people coming to your door. People who are coming to your door, who are, if you if you actually look at what is going on there, they're actually uh, people from limited companies like Capita, um, and they're soliciting money. And, and they're also, they're obtaining money by deception in some cases. And there's an, a number of legal actions that have been taken against the uh, TV license collection agencies. But if you ask them who they work for, you get to, you ask too many questions to the TV license collector, uh, you'll find that they'll just kind of like, uh, sneaker off and run yeah. away. They're essentially, you know, again, extorting funds uh, to make programs that people don't want. That's the bottom line.
they just let this guy do what he was doing and he was allowed to just have carte blanche and just do what the hell he was doing. It's a very, very sick story. And there are a lot of people out there who kept quiet and allowed this to happen to the children. I am appalled that this documentary was pulled when there was clearly enough evidence. And good reasons to cancel your TV license. What began with five women claiming in an ICV documentary into a thorough investigation. And the fact is that not only did they pull the documentary at the 11th hour, they then went on to pay tribute to Jimmy Savile by celebrating his life. Yeah. And uh, that to me is absolutely appalling. Two programs. With two programs. ...to have been sexually assaulted by Sir Jimmy Savile has now snowballed. Silence has been shattered. Caroline Moore was just... Another woman who says she More was women abused come 40 Karen years Moore ago. Karen Moore told ITV 40 potential victims from the Broadmoor Hospital. There seems to be no end to the complaints. Newsnight's inquiry into Jimmy Savile last year started a chain of events that was to prove eventually disastrous for the BBC. It was the BBC who made Savile a star, but their handling of the revelations has put the broadcaster's reputation in jeopardy. Obviously, a lot of people knew about it. A lot of people knew what was going on. A lot of people didn't say anything. 